Hello everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds, I am Captain Logan. And I am Vince. Hey Vince. Yes, Cap! Today's question. Whose question? Today's question. Oh. Comes from King 191912. Uh, King has a, uh, a pretty long topic, and I, I want to read all of this because uh, he has a lot of uh, interesting and insightful things to say, and um, we will probably get a better video out of this by addressing all the things that he says in this. So, uh, so uh, yeah, we're going to talk about uh, uh, King's topic about um, people's perceptions of comic book movies, is pretty much what we're talking about today. And um, here it is. Um, okay, now, Vince is going to do goofy things with his face because I know Vince, and um, try, try to pay attention if you at all can. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> you too, Vince. Oh. Okay. Uh, King says, r really, pay attention because we have to talk about this. King says, uh, after listening to your recent GNN in defense of the comic medium, ooh, a follow up, uh, I thought of an important issue to discuss. You may not agree, but in the last year I've come to notice a lot of comic book fans simplifying comics to superheroes, and strangely, a particular version of superheroes. This is spread into the movies, too. For instance, a lot of these fans have said that the Marvel Studio films are great comic book films, the best, but the Nolan Batman films are not. They'll say these are great films, but they're not comic book films. Why? Lack of Clayface, Poison Ivy, Bane with Venom, etc. This is completely ridiculous. These films are... Would you stop it? <laughs> these films are simplifying the comic book medium and pushing away anything that isn't heroes and tights punching bad guys. They make other comic books appear to be invalid, such as Preacher, Why the Last Man, and Walking Dead, simply because these are not superhero stories. This makes me, as a Vertigo guy, look invalid as a fan of the medium because I don't define my love of comics around guys in red and blue suits. There is a pretentiousness to this and a closed-mindedness that makes me wonder if the fans aren't going to accept comics for all that they are and close them off to a genre, then why would anyone from outside the medium take comics seriously at all? The apparent fans are not. Um, that was uh, that was an extremely well written question, and um, and now uh, we're going. You know what? Forget the clock. <laughs> and what? Uh, now now we're gonna. <laughs> Well, but I like the clock. Okay, fine, Vince. Vince and his <laughs> clock. Okay. It allows us to know when we've gone over time so, <laughs> so that we, we can, can keep going. Keep going over time. All, all, right, all right, Vince. That's the point. All right. <laughs> so I've put ten minutes on the clock. Here we go. Uh, okay. What's your immediate reaction to that To that question? There's a lot there, so let's really dive into it. Uh, I think King has is, is really hit on the head. I think, you know, maybe... I think King uh, addresses a great point here. Maybe the problem with the uh, public perception of comic books, uh, general public perception of comic books, isn't just because of what they perceive comics to be. Maybe it's what comic book readers want comics to be, and they try to uh, project that into every version of the superhero. So maybe people say, well, it's childish, because a lot of people, they look back on their childhood days reading comic books back in the day, and uh, they're like, well, I like the plot-driven. I like the, the white hats and black hats. And that's what I want. I want escapist fiction. And then uh, you try to translate that, you translate that to today, and it's difficult for anybody to rectify that in their head to take it seriously. Because there is still, you know, even adults wanting that simpler fiction. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I completely agree with that. Um, I think that... This is really great for what we were talking about last time because um, I made the case that comic books as a medium, because after all, it's just, you know, it's, it's words and pictures, uh, doesn't have to just be about uh, about superheroes, and yet there's the perception that that's what it is. And then uh, I, I, we had uh, at least a couple of commenters that said, yeah, but most of comics really are superhero fiction. Uh, like, if you have if you have a person that you're trying to convince, look, comic books are, are great, and if you're okay with, uh, with with the medium of reading words and pictures on, on the page, you don't have to just read superhero. You're asking them to really delve and find it, because most, most of what's really, really popular is superheroes. And you're talking to two comic book readers that love superheroes, you know? And so, yeah. And, um, and most of what I like is superhero, and to be fair, um, it was only uh, in the last few years that I started reading anything that wasn't superheroes. So I, in my own mind, uh, I, you know, um, saw uh, comic books as synonymous with superheroes. And uh, yet I, I now will make the point, well, look, it doesn't have to just be superheroes. We can do a lot of different things with this medium. So he has an extremely good point about that. Um, having said that, I, I, I feel the need to... Um, 
to uh, somewhat take up for some of the folks that are um, that, that are saying, well, um, the Marvel Studios films are great comic book films, but the Nolan films aren't great comic book films. I think that um, I think that that is a gross simplification that people are saying that, and I have heard that too. He's not wrong. People say that. I think that is a gross simplification. I think part of the semantics, though, I think that some people will say that, but they don't really mean what they're saying. I mean, like they shouldn't say it that way, but I think I, I think wouldn't you agree though that a lot that a lot of what people are saying when they say that is is um you know the Marvel Studios movies those remind me of what the comics that they are based on were like, whereas the, whereas Nolan went a different direction with Batman that we didn't really see in the comic books, and so I think when people say that you know they're 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 really comic book, they mean that kind of comic book. You know, maybe when somebody says that, a movie but he's is not right. wrong either. Yeah. You know, maybe when people say that a movie is really comic book like, what they're really saying is that uh, the movie managed to capture the uh, uh, fantasticism, I don't know if that's even a word, uh, the, the fantastic nature of comic books and the escapist fiction of comic books. Because when you go and you watch something like, uh, like Nolan's Batman, uh, you're watching something that's really heavy. You're watching something that you have to sit and digest. It's not something that Absolutely. you're going to just go and enjoy. Uh, you're watching uh, Whedon's Avengers, and you're watching something that has uh, obvious, a comic nature, well, not comic as in comic books, but a comedic nature. Uh, and there's also, you know, there's still superheroes. There's a grandiose, larger-than-life feel. There, it's definitely a, a heightened reality, and, and and Batman's heightened too, but not to the same kind of degree. I mean, like, and uh, you know, King has a good point here, and I think that I've, I'm inclined to agree with him that uh, a comic book can do either or, both whatever. It can do its own thing. It doesn't have to be that uh, grandiose, heightened reality, comedic comic book. It doesn't have to be that. In fact, a lot of them are not, and a lot of superheroes are not. Uh, if nothing else... But superhero is a heightened concept all by itself. Yeah, I just, mean... Just by, just by the very the very nature, it doesn't even matter if they have superpowers, Vince. You have a guy who puts on a cape and tights, and he goes out and he fights crime. That's already a heightened reality, because um, our world doesn't look like that. Yeah. Uh, essentially, I mean, uh, what if superheroes existed in real life? Really? That's a weird question, because uh, if you had the means, you would probably put yourself towards something other than being a superhero. If I had a bajillion dollars and wanted to help people, I would uh, donate to something that could do it. Why? I wouldn't necessarily have to train my body for years and years to do this. It didn't make any sense. So, uh, I understand why people would look at superheroes as being something that's not exactly realistic. Because it's not. <laughs> I think it's very interesting to try to kind of get your head in the perceptions of what people must have been thinking when they were reading the earliest superheroes. Because uh, you know, you go back to 1938 and you see um, and you see Superman, and, and you've got this guy in Clark Kent who comes up with the idea to put tights on and um, and, and fight crime with a dual identity. Um, that makes him like 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 really creative for coming up with it because he doesn't live in a world where anybody else has come up with that yet. He doesn't live in a world that already has super superheroes in comic books, have fictional superheroes that people are reading. Um, nobody, um, decades later, in, in our day and age, can come in a comic book, can feasibly come up with the idea of putting on a costume and not have gotten that from comic books. Not possible. Because, <laughs> because you would have to create a world where comic books do not exist. And that's far-fetched, because they, they do, and it, it's, it's hard to just, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, have you ever read anything like that, where, where, like, where like you just you read a fiction where in order to make the premise work, they have to just conveniently say this thing never existed, you know what I mean? In this universe, we never had television. Everything else is there, but we never had television, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, in this universe, uh, we, we, we never had um, hats. No one ever wore a hat, ever. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Um, and so uh, I, it, it really, it really changes the way that we perceive um, these characters. And um, I, I think that it, I, this is a point that I, that I meant to make when we talked about um, when we did our defense of the comic medium. And um, I think that this is uh, the best place to bring it up now. Is that um, Comics are such a visual medium, but they're not visual in the same way as movies, because after all, people in real life will people watch, and people find it interesting to watch people's mannerisms and how people actually move and talk and, 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 and conduct themselves and walk. And my point is, you can watch a film if the, if people, if the people are interesting and the dialogue is well written and, and we care about what's going on in the scene, um, you can watch a film where, a person, where people are simply walking around and that can be, and, and you can enjoy that. Harder to get away with that in a comic 
comic book because just like prose, you still don't have physical delivery. And I think that's the reason that the comic book medium is usually going to have supernatural aspects to it. Fair enough. And I think that that has everything to do with what King's talking about. Is that is that I, even with the even with the comic books that he's that, that he's mentioning um, that he likes to read, uh, Why the Last Man, a lot of Vertigo stuff. Um, most of those are still going to have supernatural elements to them, and uh, that is still, on the whole, to people who don't read comics, going to hurt it somewhat as a medium because not everybody enjoys reading things that have supernatural elements in it. But um, name me one fictional comic book you've ever read that has zero supernatural elements in it. Uh, I tried. I found it dull. I'll say that. <laughs> there, there are a lot of comic books out there. That, that's my uh, point. Why is it dull? Uh, you know, that's the thing, is that uh, I feel like comics have a certain kinetic nature to it. I feel like comics need... I feel like they are primed and just perfect for action and for heightened reality. Exactly. Uh, that's the thing, is that uh, when you have two talking heads... I mean, well, essentially, the WB. No, the, the CW. CW. Right. CW. Oh, I'm stuck in the past. But <laughs> but with a comic book, that's literally what it is if it's a drama. It's two talking heads. Uh, that's a lot of what a lot of webcomics are. And I can't wrap my mind around reading webcomics because it's just two people chatting at each other. And the writer's saying, I'm so clever for coming up with this fun thing. Uh, but what's fun about it is what they're saying to each other. And if there's no delivery, then... How am I supposed to really get myself into that relationship and really understand what's what's going on between these two characters? Is it just what's being spoken? Especially if it's a long soliloquy, and the only expression that you have is that one still of the character's face doing this. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's got to be it's got to be bolder than that. Um, and, and you know, like I like I often do, I made a statement, and then while you were talking, I thought about it and realized I was wrong. Um, <laughs> it, it's not that it's not that all action is the right word. It's not that most that all comics and most of them do, but it's not that all comics have supernatural elements. Um, again, you could point to a lot of Batman stories and say that's not really supernatural. Um, but but uh, but they're heightened as we were as as we were discussing. You know, I mean, I mean, for instance, uh, Red. You know, I mean, that's not really a supernatural story, but there's a lot of stuff that blows up in it. You know what I mean? You can put things in panels that are fun to look at. Um, you know, you know, you know, stuff like that. Um, I mean, not everything is Conan. Not everything is Preacher. Uh, <laughs> I realize I just named two super non superhero titles, but uh, I mean, some things are like Back to Brooklyn. There's no, there's no real supernatural or super science or whatever. It's but just... those are the few and far between books, right? Yeah. Like those are the ones that your friend that's never read a comic book before, you're gonna have to physically hand that to him. He's not gonna go out and find that. He's not gonna walk into a comic store and find that on a, sitting on a shelf. The pr primarily what he's gonna see are as as uh, King says, guys in tights. So I'm I'm with him in that in that uh, there's nothing wrong with King as a comic book reader preferring things that are not guys in tights because there's stuff there's stuff for him and and, and and some of the better and there's some great stories told in that um me personally i, I love guys in tights I, I i really i really enjoy superheroes but but, but i i just i just want to say that, that that i'm not one of those guys saying well your favorite comic book movies are invalid because they don't have costumes um, no, that's stupid. Uh, having said that, I think that I should also men uh, mention that um, the, that uh, the film industry has really tapped into a lot of those and are trying to find non-superhero comic book properties to make movies out of. Um, you know, this has been happening, and you know, some of them are good and some of them aren't. Um, but I'm just saying that like not every comic book movie is a superhero movie, and there are a lot of comic book movies that I didn't know were comic books before I saw the film or before I. You know, heard about the film, and so at least at least that's happening. But those, of course, are not bringing in the baz the bazillions of dollars that Avengers and Dark Knight are, and and they're not going to. Those are commercial movies. Um, I'm just saying that he, he's he's right that this is. I think he's right that, that that it's a problem. At the same time, I completely understand why it's going on, and, and it's not going to go away. Yeah, I think the the main thing to bring away from King's question mm -hmm. is that. Uh, the problem is not just without or without outside of uh, of the comic book audience. It's also within the comic book. Okay, audience. good, good point. Uh, you can't just say, "Well, those people aren't taking me seriously." Well, there are certain perceptions that many, not all, so don't get too uptight about this, but uh, that many people will. Uh, like I've had a friend that uh, has told me, "I really just want the Lone Ranger. That's what I want. I want a guy who rides around and saves people. That is it." And then I say. You're a professor, and that's what you want? <laughs> like, like, really? 
you, you don't want something that's super complicated and really deep and has lots of social commentary and has a journey for the character. No, I want a guy with a gun that shoots the guns out of other people's hands. Okay. Uh, so, you, yeah, good point. There is a reason why comic book fans are not taken seriously. But uh, that doesn't mean that they shouldn't be aware. Comic book fans don't lose hope. You know, just be, you know, take yourself as seriously as you need to. That's the thing, is that uh, you cannot say that a medium is valid just because of what it's commonly used for. But I think that we also need to be careful within the medium that we don't get so fanboyish that we start telling other people what they're supposed to like. Um, that that's it, it's simply wrong. We shouldn't be doing that. Um, if if uh, if King feels like there have been people that have told him, well, your your uh, you know you know your 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 favorite franchise, your favorite comic franchise being the Nolan uh, you know Batman Dark Knight films um, and, and and things like that. Um, it's you you call it heavy and it is, but that's what he likes, you know. Yeah. And so and so you know if, if if those people are saying, well, you know you know that's that's too deep for a comic book movie. Movie, um, you shouldn't like that as well as these uh, these other things because um, you know you know Avengers is straight off the page. That's not fair. It's yeah. just not fair. Now here's That's... the thing, okay? I love Go ahead. if you don't mind. Let me say this real quick. Um, I love the the Avengers film because in a lot of ways it's straight off the page. It's also really funny. Um, but uh, but like like so I'm gonna make this point. I think Avengers is right off the page. I don't think Nolan's uh, Batman and Dark Knight films are straight off the page. And it doesn't hurt them. That's not a problem. They're because because they're 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 great. Um, you know you know well well told stories. Um, granted, I've gone on record to say that I don't care for Rises as much as a lot of people, but I still think it's a good movie. And um, and I'll I'll say I'll say this here. I've been actually the more I think about it, liking it more. I have come up with some things about that movie, um, and, uh, and 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 discovered some things thematically where actually I, I think it's a better movie than I ever gave it credit for. So I apologize for that. But um, I'm just saying that like. Um, even you know, even even rises on top of those other two, which I don't like as well as the other two. Um, the problem with that movie is not that it doesn't look like the comic book, and that's not fair. We can't we can't do we should not be doing that. You know, it's the other side of the coin. Uh, a person telling you that you shouldn't like a movie because it's based on a comic book, or that you shouldn't take it seriously because it's based on a comic book, is is the other side of the coin of a comic book purist saying you shouldn't like that movie because it's not close enough to the source material. Uh, there is no validity to either statement. It's oversimplification. Um, sometimes a comic being um, not close enough to the source material is a problem mm -hmm. uh, because the source material some, sometimes is a great deal more interesting than what they did, which was not as good. But, but I mean, like, you have to take it on a case... Origins, Wolverine. Exactly. You have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, you can't just say, well, because Origins wasn't close enough to the comics. Um, every movie must be just like, you know, just because Rise of the Silver Surfer had Galactus as a giant cloud doesn't mean that, that um, you know, every single comic book movie must be exactly like like the comics. Yeah. But it also... Perfect example is Blade. Yeah, because it was better than the comics. And, and, or at least a lot of us think that. I mean, I think that. Um, I, I do. I'll agree. But also, to King's point, um, comic book doesn't necessarily mean the Marvel method. Yeah, comic book does not necessarily mean Silver Age Superman. Um, there, there are it's a medium, and there's a lot of different definitions of it. Um, so if you ever hear me say in a, in a comic book movie, because because I, I, I I've done this, and it never occurred to me that it was a problem. But and, and I probably won't stop saying it either. But I mean, if you've ever heard me go, um, hey, that was really comic book. I've probably even said that in real life before. Um, what I mean is, it's that kind of comic book. You know what I mean? If I say if I say, boy, uh, the the thing they did in um, What's what's a what's a good example? Um, you know, you know, something in maybe uh, Richard Donner's Superman. Hey, that was really comic book. Um, well, what I mean is that was really Superman comic book. That was that that was that was a lot like what I saw on the page. It's very for traditional problem. for what it is. Yeah, exactly. So when so so I'm just saying that like. I think that there may be some malice going on, but at the same time, there may be some people who, when they say, hey, Avengers is really comic book, they just mean it reminds them of the, the experience that they had reading that one. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I've had a very similar conversation with a feminist about uh, representations of the male and female gender and what we consider masculine and feminine. So when I say that that's masculine, she says, nah, you can't say that. When I say that's comic book, you say, nah, you can't say that. <laughs> because that's a trait of something that's not inherently of the two. It is just a way of telling a story or just a way of life. And uh, I think I just laughed in the middle of this. I'm like, oh my goodness, I've had this conversation before with something that may be potentially more serious. 
But the thing is, I think sometimes things really are really comic book because that's a medium that doesn't necessarily, as a medium, translate to another medium. So when something manages to go, you know, like 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 Fair like, like like with Blade, you know, you get to the, you get to the end of Blade, and they've got this they've got the sequence that that ends that that movie where I go, wow, this looks like comic book panels, you know, um, th this uh, this reminds me of things I've seen in a comic book that I didn't think you could do on screen, and um, so, you know, same thing with a, with with a, with a lot of uh, with a lot of comic book films. Um, I, I've had that I had that with bits of The Crow, and I had that with bits of, um, of Sin City, and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. You know, that's the thing, is that a comic doesn't necessarily always transfer to screen, so if you watch a, a comic book movie and say, wow, that, that this does not work, I could see it working a comic book, you could say that this movie is trying to be very comic book, but shouldn't. <laughs> so, that's almost, I guess that's the other side of the coin of what he's saying there. So, I don't know. I, I think the bottom line for me is that, uh, the perception of the way of telling the story as being either good or bad or preferable or, uh, you know, undesirable is really the guts of what the issue is here. And do you find it to be preferable or do you find it to be less desirable? Um, as I always say, uh, you gotta you gotta really try to figure out the difference between a taste issue and um, and uh, effectiveness. You know, um, do, do you do you not like something, and you not like something that other people like because it's told as as a story ineffectively, and because it doesn't do what the intention of the film was, or do you not like it because it's not what you like? So what King is saying is he prefers the Dark Knight films to the Avengers stuff. I, I think that's what he's saying, um, be, because that's that's what he likes, and he should. He should not be, um, you know, getting dogged on by comic fans for um, liking something that they find to be less comic book. That's too limiting. That's not fair. And um, I agree with that. I, I don't think I don't think people should I don't think people should necessarily dog him for that. Yeah. And by the way, King, most of my poll right now is IDW and Dark Horse. So whatever. <laughs> These mainstreamers can have their comics. Yeah, but I'm unabashedly mainstream. I mean, like, but, but, the, but the thing is, I mean, I enjoy other stuff too. Um, I'll read a Vertigo book. I just, you know, like to buy. But I collect superheroes, you know. So yeah, and the thing is that I'm as much of a collector or more of a collector than I am a reader too. Um, yeah. Or at least, at least I have. I, I have historically been that way, and then I started reviewing things and now I review a lot so I buy more but maybe the first step to recovery from this uh, ridiculous bias that we have both within and outside of uh, the comic book audience is being eclectic you know having a more varied taste than one thing yeah exactly we, we've got we've got to do that um geek Fusion is the best thing that ever happened to me because I've read comics that are not superheroes and I never would have done that otherwise <laughs> um, but I I, 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 wanna, I just thought of this and I want to say this real quick before we go Vince um, we and and, and I, I hope I don't get stepped on too much for saying this, but I, I really feel like this is the place to say this, and it probably needs to be said. Um, people need to stop um, um, comparing Avengers and Dark Knight Rises. They're two different movies. Yeah, and I'm they're trying to achieve two different still. things. Yeah, it, 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 it's ridiculous. Um, just because they're the two biggest movies of the summer and they're both comic-based movies, people feel a need. I even saw it before Rises came out. People going, Rises is better than Avengers. You haven't even seen it yet! It's not out! How would you know that? And, um, look, I'm not gonna say I think one is better than the other. They're two really different things! Yeah, you know, you're trying to compare apples and oranges. Yeah. Well, I think the citrus is so much, it's not an apple! <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, so anyway, um, not, again, I'm sorry, not to be preachy or anything, but I feel like that that's part that, that what King is talking about is somewhat of a symptom of that, where where it's it's like it's like people feeling the need to validate the thing that they think is that that, that, that they're in love with by dogging down on something else. This is not politics. You do not need to make an anti Avengers campaign ad if you prefer Dark Knight Rises. Are you are you with me? Yeah, just because I like. Death Wish more than I like Commando doesn't mean I can't appreciate the ridiculous nature of Commando. It's a different thing. It's an entirely different kind of movie. Yeah. There's essentially a man with a gun doing things and hunting people down. It's the same idea, different things. And we had the exact same thing with the uh, with with the Nolan films uh, after after that that got popular with the Tim Burton movies. Look, I'll agree with you all day long. I will say that all day long that um, Batman Begins is, of course, a way deeper film than 1989. 89 wasn't trying to be a deep film, and it did not even kind of change the way I feel about that movie. Yeah. You know.
Because they're different things. They're both called Batman, but they're different things! Yeah, the existence of one <laughs> does not invalidate the it, other. It doesn't. Well, Vince, now that we have harped on our soapbox, thanks a lot for watching uh, Geeks Not Nerds. And uh, if you have uh, opinions, well, of course you're going to have opinions. Leave those in the comments if you would. And uh, also, if there's uh, something you'd like us to talk about in a future video, leave that in the comments as well. Thanks always for watching. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince, reminding you to support your local comic book store. See you later.